What's going on everyone? RGB Tech here again. In today's video, we're checking out the brand new version of RPCS3 on Android, which just received a major update. This update brings some exciting improvements, so I'll be testing it out to see how well it performs and what's changed. So here's the new Alpha 5 version, which was recently released. If you already have this emulator installed, you can simply update it without uninstalling or removing anything. All right, I've already updated the RPCS3 emulator. Let's open it up. As you can see, nothing has changed or been removed. Everything looks normal. Now let's go to options. Here, I've installed the latest PS3 firmware, version 4.92. New settings have been added. Now let's check the system info. Right now, I'm using the POCO F6. Here, it displays the default drivers installed on the device, including the Adreno driver, version 512, and the Vulkan. This phone is powered by the Snapdragon 8S Gen 3 with an Adreno 735 GPU and comes with 12 gigs of RAM. And finally, they've added the settings option, which is essential for configuring the emulator for better performance. You can now view the internal directory. I mean, you can directly access the RPCS3 data folder without any file access restrictions. This allows you to configure or modify files straight from this path. In the advanced settings, you can configure various options like core, VFS, video, audio, IO, and system settings, along with many other features to fine tune the emulator. Let's go to core settings. Here, the PPU decoder is set to recompiler by default, and there are a lot of options, guys. To configure this emulator, I'll need to test these settings further to find the best possible configuration, and I'll cover that in a future video. But for now, I'll leave everything to default. VFS, which is basically the virtual file system. It manages the system disk files, disk cache and stuff. I'll leave it as usual. Let's go to video. This is important for improving overall performance. Here, you can customize the performance overlay, like the FPS meter and its position. By default, the renderer is set to Vulkan, but it depends some devices run better on OpenGL. Next, set the resolution. The native 720p is set by default, but set it as low as possible, preferably 480p or 576p. The aspect ratio is set to 16.9. Set the frame limit to PS3 native or 30 FPS, or turn it off if you want more FPS. The shader mode is set to Async Shader Recompiler, and shader precision should be set to low quality. If your device struggles to render graphics or has glitches in some games, you can enable both right color buffers and right depth buffer to fix the issue. VSync is enabled for stability, and there's also an option to enable frame skip if you're using a low power device to improve performance. Audio settings, same as usual. In input output settings, you can connect devices like a keyboard, mouse, or controller. It's also good to see that they've added a save state feature for games. Like guys, they've definitely made a lot of improvements in this version of emulator. And there are also a few more advanced settings. You can boot games in full screen mode, or you can tweak whatever you need all right in here, everything. Like you need more patience to configure this stuff. They also added a custom GPU driver support option. Here it's set to default driver, or you can add driver. Like, if you're using a Snapdragon device, you can import the Turnip Adreno drivers to improve the performance and fix issues while running PS3 games. All right, now let's go back to the main screen. Here I've already installed some game ROMs, so let's test them out. Oh, it's still crashing, guys. Let's try GTA 5. And, yeah, again, it's crashing. Let's try this one. Come on, still crashing. There are definitely optimization issues for most Snapdragon users. Let's give it one more shot. Yep, still crashing. Now let's try this again on my Galaxy S24 Ultra, which has the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. I'll set the resolution to 720 by 480p and the shader quality to low. Let's load the PS3 console. I've already compiled all the firmware resources, including the SPU cache. All right, let's select no. And there it is. Wow. 
we finally got the PS3 console running on the Android before GTA 6. Look at this, guys. It's insane. It runs buttery smooth, and it's actually working. I'm not kidding. This is for real. The installation process usually takes around 20 to 30 minutes to fully load. But finally, I managed to get the PS3 home running on the S24 Ultra. Now, let's check out the system information. Here, you can see the firmware version and the available storage space. If you install any game ROM files, they'll show up here since it's running on the official firmware. Anyways, I also installed Grand Theft Auto 4. Let's see if it works. All right. All right, it loaded. But there are still a lot of frame drops. It's even slower than the Molly test we did in the last video. Ah, shit. It crashed, guys. Like I mentioned, Snapdragon versions still need more optimization and fixes. Now, let's jump into the Molly device test. I've already configured everything. As you can see, it shows the Mali G68 GPU with driver version 38.1.0 and the Vulcan driver. This phone has the Exynos 1380 and comes with 6 gigs of RAM. The settings are the same as we applied before. Compared to the last version, there's a slight improvement in FPS. You'll notice a more stable performance and the speed of shader compilation has improved it loads textures a bit faster. We're getting around 8 to 10 FPS on the Mali G68, like it's pretty good for a mid-tier chip. Anyways, that's all for this video, guys. This update is really impressive with all the custom settings, configurations, and custom GPU driver support. Hopefully, future updates will bring better stability and performance. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.